Hey everybody, it's Mike Sullivan with Born to Shine. Today we have an awesome guest. Her name is Dr. Jordan Anderson, and she is the Director of Curriculum over at the Barrington School District number 220 in beautiful Barrington, Illinois. And uh, Dr. Anderson, thank you so much for carving out some time with us today. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. This is a definite joy to uh, talk about all things education and kids and uh, thrilled to be here for sure. Awesome. Well, we're thrilled to have you. And, you know, what was your journey like to become the director of curriculum? That is, that's a huge position with a lot of people looking up to you for guidance and leadership um, and your wisdom. So uh, what was your story or your journey like? Sure. Uh, so I started off as a special education teacher and also uh, worked as a general education teacher. So uh, I actually did that for 13 years, which I absolutely loved. And during that time, I really had some outstanding administrators that I worked with who really helped to tap into what they perceived to be my greatest talents and greatest strengths and uh, definitely encouraged me to seek out my administration degree uh, and kind of go down that path. So I would say after 10 or 11 years of teaching, I really started thinking it was perhaps time to make a move. And so uh, from there, I you know moved on to uh, building level administration and working uh, through some summer programming as an administrator, uh, and then joined the team here in Barrington as uh, director of student services. So I did work uh, as a director supporting our special education population. Uh, and now, now as director of learning services, um, I am very, very fortunate to work not only in the student services department, but also in the department of teaching and learning. And in our teaching and learning department, we have a director of elementary curriculum, a director of secondary curriculum, myself in learning services, which I oversee a variety of areas in the district. Uh, so it's been a really, really amazing journey. I feel like I've been able to experience um, pretty much, you know, kind of every different type of position that one could, uh, you know, in the world of education and to be in this spot today with the hopes of one day uh, becoming an assistant superintendent and eventually a superintendent of schools. Uh, it's wonderful to work alongside such talented uh, educators who really care about kids, uh, put kids first, and also uh, for me, you know, having a really strong focus on adult wellness and uh, respecting teachers and uh, lifting teachers up for the amazing work that they do every day. So that's a big focus of mine as well. And I feel like uh, doing what's best for kids and also making sure that our educators are well taken care of um, is really why I kind of sit sit here today and, and do what I do. Love it. Love it. That's so important. And I'm so glad you mentioned that, Dr. Anderson, that, of course, we're all here for the kiddos and supporting them. But we also need to support the teachers and all the staff. I mean, there are people, too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely true. And when you were K through 12, was there anything that maybe you struggled with? For me, I was bullied, started in third grade. I had uh, OCD, ADD, anxiety, depression. I had A through Z. I was just a little mess. Um, was there anything that you kind of were struggling with when you were a kiddo? Yeah, you know what? I would say, um, thankfully, you know, at the elementary and middle school level, there's not a whole lot that stands out to me. But definitely in high school, um, I just so happened to be the kid who was the real rule follower. Uh, I wasn't, I wasn't a, a child or student who was all that interested in uh, participating in a lot of the things that, you know, you might hear that some, you know, high school or even early college age students uh, do. And that actually did impact me socially a bit, I think. Uh, I think a lot about that now that I didn't uh, come from a place of judgment. It wasn't that, oh, I'm not going to go do whatever that was, you know, on the weekend because I think that's wrong. And I think I just personally wasn't interested. I wasn't into it. And so uh, that, you know, impacted me maybe the next week at school when everyone was talking about, you know, they were at so-and-so's house and what they, mm -hmm. uh, you know, did over the weekend. And I just wasn't really interested in that. So I had, you know, my core group of friends that, um, you know, I'm still friends with to this day, but I do think that uh, there, that can be really difficult to kind of navigate, especially when you're learning how to really be who you are. And I oftentimes think about, you know, when I was in high school, uh, we were kind of right on the cusp of social media coming out and all of those things. So we didn't have, you know, Instagram and TikTok and all of those things. And I wonder how I would fare in a world today 
where social media is so prevalent being the person um, that I am. And so I think, uh, you know, my parents always say, oh my goodness, like we ended up with this child who just like wanted to, you know, follow every, every social norm and every, and every rule. And it, it was just because that's just, I don't know why, like who, who I was and it didn't bother me if other people wanted to do other things, but I do think that that impacted me socially, but would have been even worse, uh, in a day and age like today where mm. social media is so, um, popular and such a big part of, you know, being connected to others. So that was definitely a struggle. It, it still sticks out to me a little bit to this day, especially as a freshman and a sophomore, um, about things I, I didn't go to, or things I didn't attend and how then I was perceived because I didn't. And I do think that was pretty challenging. Yeah. Wow. I mean, thank you for sharing that. And I'm sorry you went through that. And it's interesting that you bring up the point that it probably would be more difficult today with all of the social media, especially for bullying or cyberbullying. And it just, it just doesn't stop. So it's not only at the school where I had it, but then the kids also get it when they go home. It's just nonstop. So I, that's a really wise point that you made. Um, and you know, what, what are y'all doing for your students and staff um, to support them with their emotional well-being, their mental well-being? And then just in a perfect world, what would you love to see more of? Yeah, so I'm really proud of the work that's being done here in Barrington. Uh, we recently uh, went through uh, a process of taking a look at our um, social emotional learning resources and how we want to make sure we are supporting students and actually recently um, just adopted a resource that we're going to be using um, preschool all the way through high school and through our transition program. Uh, so we actually just trained for the first time ever. We trained our entire staff, um, everybody on staff, certified and classified staff here in Barrington just last week on this resource. We had everybody together in one location uh, to make sure that uh, everyone is uh, well-informed and well-equipped to utilize this resource and pieces of this resource with students. And I do think that we really have put um, the emotional and social needs of students uh, at the forefront here. Um, and one thing we're really doing is kind of shifting our language a bit. Um, I did recently attend a conference and they talked a lot about how, especially in education, we talk about how we don't have time. Mm. Um, oh, we don't have time for that. And, mm. and there's a lot of truth to that. Our day is not, you know, we do not have an infinite amount of time with our students. However, when we talk about not having time for something, what we're really saying is that's not a priority. Right. So we are really making the mm -hmm. emotional uh, needs of students and staff a priority. We are saying we do have time for this. We're going to make time for this. And our staff is really excited. We have an amazing group of teachers that worked with myself and um, another administrator on getting us to this point. And people are feeling really, really excited and really energized. And while, of course, academics are at the core of school, I think we all know that we cannot reach those academic goals and take a look at academic performance if we are not in, you know, an emotionally regulated, solid place, uh, you know, when it comes to relationships and, and all of those things that are so important. So I think we are really, really working to make sure we are meeting the needs of our students. And as we kind of go into this process, I'm focusing a lot on staff wellness as well, as I mentioned um, a moment ago, and uh, really, really feel that we need to be pouring into our staff and making sure that they are well taken care of. Uh, we held a wellness retreat this summer for our teachers um, to really, you know, get them back into, you know, we're coming back to school and how, how can we help you and how can you make sure you're taken care of? Mm -hmm. And I think that Sometimes in education, we have a tendency to encourage teachers and staff to take care of themselves while also adding more and more to what their responsibilities are. So we're really working hard to, to find that balance and make sure that uh, staff is well taken care of. So I do think it's an, an exciting time here in Barrington. We really have um, this as a strategic priority for us right now, in addition to too many other things, but we have amazing support from our superintendent and our board of education in um, getting all of this, um, you know, continuing work and it's exciting for sure. 
That's so beautiful, Dr. Anderson. I love that because you're putting the emotional well-being and the mental well-being at the at, uh, important uh, that we do have time that, yes, you're going through this. Well, guess what? I care. And mm -hmm. we're going to talk about it. And let's do this together. We're in this together. And I love that. Um, my mom was a teacher. So I've seen it firsthand where teachers, they give everything. They give and give and give until there's nothing left. So it's great that you're giving back to them and feeding them and with their emotional well-being and, and their needs. And we see you, we hear you, we value you. You are important to us. And it's, that's so great that you're doing that. And, you know, if there are any um, parting words or it's such a cliche, I don't even know why I said that, but any, <laughs> anything that's on your heart, Dr. Anderson, then if you're like, maybe if a, a student is watching this or if a parent is watching this or if a teacher or a principal or anyone, what, what kind of words of encouragement or thoughts would you like to share with them? Yeah, so I would really say that, you know, if I think about who who I really am, you know, at the root of myself personally and professionally, I, I really just want to continue to encourage. And, and if, you know, anybody who's listening knows me, I, I say this a lot, but we really need to start celebrating and appreciating the unique values and unique characteristics of every individual person. And I believe that to be true for students. I believe that to be true for staff, for people we run into, you know, just in life or at the grocery store or anywhere in the community. Um, I think that we've, as a society, kind of gotten ourselves into this, um, you know, a little bit of a struggle with expecting that everyone has to believe the exact same thing you do mm -hmm. and behave the exact same way you do. And also, I think that's true for students that sometimes we feel like this is what's expected and everybody has to do it this way. And um, there are just so many talents out there. People are so good at so many different things. And I think we would all serve ourselves very well to just appreciate that we're not all the same. And also from an educational lens, recognizing that our students aren't going to all learn in the same way. They're all going to show us things differently and that we have to adapt to that. And we have to adapt to that when we're working with others and when we're out in the community with families. And I really do feel that if we can just focus on the fact that we are not all the same, and that's actually what makes, makes it great, uh, you know, to be, to be with others and surrounding ourselves with people who we can learn from, I think is, is really, really important and will uh, make a big impact on education, I think, moving forward, if we can just recognize um, the uniqueness in everyone. Absolutely. That's so well said. Thank you so much, Dr. Anderson, for being with us today. Yes, it was wonderful to be here. Thank you so much.